Fuego. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. Caliente. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Caliente. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. Caliente. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. Caliente. Fuego. Hot. Fuego. Fuego. It's hot. Fuego. It's hot. Bees itching with the ticks. I can teach her arithmetic. John Wick with the stick. Hey y'all, welcome to the Naked Truth. Another Monday. Y'all know how we do it every Monday from uh, 30 to 6.30. I'm your girl Lil Pookie, the host of the Naked Truth. And I'm joined, of course, by this guy. Ah, uh, square guy, the one talk fly through, so he lied to you, man. How y'all doing, man? I'll let you just see it in English next time, though. Hey, come on, man. I don't know what I'm Why y'all be hating on my introduction, man? Hmm? Why y'all be hating on my introduction? Cause I, I don't even know what you said. Like I you said, just. I'm gonna do that. Y'all know it's the square guy that wants to talk fly tea for you, lie to you. Y'all welcome to the political hip hop outlet. Okay. How y'all doing, social media family? Is that slow enough? That was perfect. Okay. You get a car. You get a car. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't want. <laughs> you don't want a speech therapy, huh? You should. It's not too late. It's not, not too late. And my mama told me that too. Shit, boy, it ain't too late for you. Boy. No, it's not too late. So as long as, long as you got a praying mama, it ain't too late for you. That's it. She can heal a whole lot of stuff. It ain't too late for you. So, what, 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 what we got to do today, man? What's up? Man, we got a hot show today. We're going to be talking with this lovely lady um, about she's living with lupus. Wow. And this is like a big 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 issue i know a lot of people that's dealing with lupus right now currently and when that thing flares up it's Man, not I, good i have some family members dealing with lupus and, mm -hmm. and you know you know what gets me my, which I, it's, it's, it's not an issue she won't trip mm -hmm. my sister and i we basically grew up in the sun mm -hmm. and now that this lupus thing come along she can't even go out she can't enjoy the sun like she used to oh wow and i'm like man it's crazy yeah, yeah, it's big. And they, um, I can't, like I said, I can't wait to bring our guest in so she can give us a little bit more insight on about it or whatever. Cause we're on the outside looking in, but yeah, yeah, it's bad though. Well, before we do that, huh? let's um, topic for the day. No, first, oh, oh, they found the little girl's body. They found wow, Princess Malaya's body. Um, was it yesterday? A couple of days ago, but they just confirmed this morning that it was indeed her wow so yeah he my waterworks were just going you know what they have a lot of bad things to say about Cornell how he <laughs> don't take people money and don't do this I don't know if the man did it or not I'm just speaking of the rhetoric that's mm -hmm. out there about him right but that man does a lot that man he did, does something, a that, whole he did lot. something that the HPD couldn't do thank you he exactly broke that, he broke that man. exactly and that's what he does. You know what I mean? And people are so quick to be so judgmental. But guess what? He bought that baby home. He broke that baby. He dude. bought that baby home. Because without him going into jail, getting the, you know, getting a visitation and visiting with this dude and getting him to open his mouth and talk, it would have been a cold case. Point blank period. They would have put it in the back row like they do everything else. And all they can charge him with was tampering with everything. Tampering with everything. Nobody, with no case. He would have got away with it. Mm -hmm. But whatever it was, God used talk Carnell as that tool, that instrument exactly. to get that man's conscience and bring him to exactly. where. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what he does. He's yeah. a professional at what he does. So salute, Cornell. Keep doing what you're doing. Man, <coughs> you, you're a bro. blessing. You're a true blessing, bro. Yeah. Now, one more thing I need to get done. Okay. Lock that mama ass up. That part right there. She needs to be in jail, too. That part right there. Yeah. And they said they spoke to the daddy, the biological dad, but he said he don't want to talk to the media, the news, the police. He don't want to talk to nobody but the stepdaddy. It's a lot of stuff going on around that baby. Yeah. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. We'll probably yeah. never know the whole truth, and but God rest the little soul. And speaking of another mother, that mother in Chicago, they got gunned down holding a child. Oh, my God. That I just sad. watched that video. It's so heartbreaking. If y'all have not seen that video, go to Facebook. It's all on there. It's that is all sad. on there. And it's on my page. So the... um. According to the video, there was a drive-by shooting, and it was a group of people standing outside, you know, next to a car. So the car pulls up, um, opens fire. This lady is clearly holding a baby. So um, she gets hit. She goes down behind the car, and she she laid on top of her baby. Mm -hmm. 
So she was already still in mama, you know, mama mode, like oh, trying yeah. to protect her baby. Mm -hmm. I wish all mothers thought like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I think, like that took I me think, to a whole nother level. I think in the spirit of the moment, they do that. I think it's just a natural response. It's supposed to be, yeah. but then I think about Malia. Okay, so what else we gonna talk about? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, that went somewhere. I go first. Okay, okay, let's. I tell you all what. Right. On a brighter note, our relationship question for today. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why are you looking like that? Let I'm me just let me, ask. Let me, I mean, let, I'm let just me, ready. People, let me set this stage right quick. Y'all know everybody say that there's no good men out there, and the men say there's no good women out there. And I agree. I'm just playing. Because <laughs> there's a lot of good women out there. There's a lot of good men. All right. But they say they're so hard to find. Like a needle in a haystack. All right. So, would you be open to this? A long, distant relationship? No. This brother, 6'2", Kool-Aid smile, broad shoulders, 6 in the waist, 42 in the shoulders. No. Six figure at the Texas. Got a Bugatti, and you just happened to meet him somewhere. He's from Atlanta. He's from Chicago. Uh, Kelly, you want to talk to the brother? No, because first of all, if you're going to make stuff, people's finances and their looks or no, whatever, no, 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 it's no, already I mean, a brick wall. Saying, all I'm saying is this man got everything that a woman probably would desire in a man. Everything. Character-wise, material-wise, uh, uh, physicality, everything. Mm -hmm. Would you be open mm -hmm. to a long-distance relationship? No. If we yeah. like each other enough and we fall in love or whatever, whatever, I will be willing to relocate. But, but before, I'm not going to be in no long distance relocate, relationship. You have to be in a relationship with this guy to see if he's going to see all you going to relocate. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to just up and do that. Or are, you, are you jumping in like that? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find out. Mm -hmm. 832-649-8406. The question is, would you be open to a long distance relationship? Lines if are not, open. Why? I wouldn't be either. No, I'm not I like, I like, I like, I, I I like affection. I like to hold mine. I got, you got to touch me. Yeah, I like to you hold know, mine. You know, all of that phone. And, you know, they got the new dolls now. I mean, the first doll. No doll, man. Oh. <laughs> Where is this conversation going? I don't saying. want a doll. I'm just saying, okay. But the question is, would you be open to a long this relationship? As now, it's so hard to find. In your My own. answer is no. But I would love to hear the feedback and see what people think about that because my answer is still no. I don't care how you paint it. You can paint a big mansion and, and, and five dogs and and picket fence and all of that. It's still not going to change that. Yeah. I need I need to see my man in the flesh. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it either. Mm -hmm. But I know for, for some people it works. I know some corporate people. Yeah. That, you know, they, they may see each other once or twice a week or probably once. Know, every other week, and when they see each other, they make it count. They've been doing it. Some people been doing it 10, 15, 20 years. They have, You're right? I don't think I can do it that long. I need a. I probably, but <laughs> I doubt it. I ain't gonna do so it. the question is again: Would you be open to a long distance relationship? If this guy or this lady was everything that you desired in a mate, I mean, you've been down there praying and fasting, dropping Jesus tears. Oh Lord, help me, Jesus, give me somebody that love me. <laughs> help me, Lord, help me, Lord, 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 please, Lord, Jesus, help me. <laughs> And then just lighten the <laughs> Boom! There you go. But he's saying Kelly. He's saying Houston. Why would you say Kelly anyway? Okay. He's saying Tulsa, Oklahoma. Somebody got to move. There's no right. way. Somebody There's has no to way. move. But That's before, not a healthy relationship. Those you, those corporate people you're talking about or whatever, they about their money. Hi, you cannot say that a long distance relationship is not a healthy relationship because you've never experienced one. I have experienced uh, it. Let me ask you this before we, really, before we, before we bring our guests in. Mm -hmm. Tell me right now, what's a healthy relationship? What do you mean? What produces a healthy relationship? And these views do not necessarily reflect the truth of the naked truth. <laughs> <laughs> a healthy relationship. First of all, you got to make sure you have lines of communication. Okay. You have to be 100% honest with each other. And no matter how much it hurts. Or how much it may, you know, throw a little monkey wrench in the situation. You got to be open and honest about your feelings, how you feel. And mm -hmm. then you ask them how they feel. And you take that into initiative. You know what I mean? Respect how okay. they feel That's and you want them to two respect. Okay. Um, so I said trust, honesty, uh, 
communication. You got to talk. You have to communicate all the time. Emotional and mental support. Support, and stim- and yes, yes, yes. And when it, it's no longer I or you, it's us. So if we're going to be in a relationship or whatever, that means, hey, let's go, let's get it. You know what I mean? So, so if you had all those ingredients mm-hmm. in the relationship, mm-hmm. would you still be open to a long-distance relationship? No. 832-649-8406. Question is, would you be open to a long-distance relationship? But Bob, before we just, before we start getting called, yeah. you know about our guest. Okay. This lady, I had the chance to hear her speak. Did you? Yeah. And uh, I think we went to an event mm-hmm. at the U of H Sunday. Okay. Yeah. And I heard her speak. And when I heard her speak, I told you, this is how you're going to talk on my show, home. Yeah, 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 you don't, snatched don't, up. Don't, don't, don't come to the show with no mediocre. Hi, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> doing No, the same way you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and my name is, no. Nah. Come on over and do that. <laughs> do exactly but what you did. She, yeah. she, she, she spoke on something that a lot, a lot of people are right. dealing with. And they don't right. realize it. They right. think they, they think they got low blood, low iron. Mm-hmm. They think they just overworked. Uh, Houston Heat. Come up with all reasons why you be so fatigued and can't get out the bed sometimes. Right. And actually, you could be diagnosed. You probably be the lupus patient. Right. Lupus, the silent right. killer. Silent killer. Yeah, you because you it, it never shows any signs like cancer or AIDS or things like that. It just right. lingers in your body and eats you away. Tears it down. Yeah. Right. So let's bring uh Zareel Gibson. Zareel. Zareel. Like the boy Martin say, I would actually do my show if you wouldn't. So. Zareel. Zareel. How you doing? Welcome, lady. Thank you, you, thank you. I'm good. How you? Is your mic on, ma'am? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Is it on? There you yeah. go. Oh, okay, you can check. Me. One, two. One, two. There you go. You win that thing. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us the people what you're about? No. About me. What else you want to know? Okay. No, <laughs> Oh, she's uh, live, yeah. We're starting like, with an introduction yeah, so you can out. properly yeah. say your name and you okay. know, a little bit about we yourself. We can do all that. I'm good with questions. So you ask yeah. me a question, okay. I can answer anything. Before we go any right. further, I got a question for you. Okay. Would you be open to a long distance relationship? I just tried. I can't do it no more. Mm. Why? Why? Because I believe there's a connection when you actually physically get in front of somebody. A telephone connection is one thing. You can be completely connected, just falling in love, and you get in front mm-hmm. of them, and all of a sudden you'd be like, was I talking was to I, you? What was wrong with me? Yeah, exactly. I mean, was I on something? Right. I mean, I, I believe. <laughs> okay, can I ask you this? When you say I tried it, I won't do it again. What went wrong? He what, 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 he, what, what, what was the pitfall about that relationship that it wouldn't have happened if he was close? Well, according to his words, if he was close, if something was to happen to me, actually, I, I was going through something. And so... I would reach out to him, and he said all the right words, but there was no actions behind those words. Mm-hmm. So if he he said, if, well, if I was around you, then I would be able to help you more. But you're not. So what do you do then? Right. So, I mean, I, I need somebody physically here if anything was to happen to me. Mm-hmm. That way we can go, you know, you, I know what you're really about mm-hmm. because I have to know that in order to move forward. Right. Okay. I mean, you don't date just to date. You date for a purpose. Exactly. Okay. So you have to know what all goes into that. And if mm-hmm. you can't show me that. So let me ask you this. So are you opposed to the longest relationship? <coughs> or you just say it has to be with the right person? Okay. So let me, let's clarify right person in my mind. I'm not a gold digger, but you got to have some cash because it costs a lot of tra- it costs a lot to travel. Mm. Ching, ching. Yes. Digging, y'all. And, and like I said, digging. No, no, no not digging. No. <laughs> but, I mean, you have to be able to come to where I am so that we can spend more quality time together. So even if you are far away, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter because I can go a week without you, but that next week you better be in front of me. Right. So that we can have our, I'm a lovey-dovey person. I mm-hmm. like to hug and kiss and lean on my man. That's me. No, I feel safe. As a woman, I want to know that I can feel safe in all aspects. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I think that's I think that's what a, a problem that a lot of people would say they have is that I can't grab him or her when I'm needing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I deal with that. Right. Okay. Facts. 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 That part. That, that part. part. Okay. Uh, now this is Zoreal Gibson. Zoreal Gibson. Yes. You are the a loopy chick on the go. 
the lupus chick on the go. Okay, we're going to get this right. Loopy, L-U-P-I-E. Oh, I thought chick. you had it wrong. Oh. I had it wrong. This is my tagline. <laughs> okay, your It tagline. is about lupus, but mm -hmm. it, my tagline is loopy, chick on the go. Mm. And why did you come with that tagline? Because uh, I'm always on the go. Because <laughs> right. a, lot of loop, a lot of lupus patients are not on the go. Um, depending on the person, because mm -hmm. a, a lot of times, a lot of people with lupus, when you have your downtime, mm -hmm. it you literally, it's like life stops. Mm -hmm. So when you up, you on the go trying to get it done because you never know when that next time you're going to just, your body's going to be like, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Give me my minute. Wow. So a lot of people, a lot of people with lupus just keep moving forward and forward and trying to do as much as they can do right. you know, while right. they're up. Mm. And you have a nonprofit organization, right? A nonprofit, yes. And so, what, what what made you start this? Well, I was diagnosed with lupus in '97, straight out of high school. Did I just mm -hmm. date myself? That's mm -hmm. all right. I said, did I, did I just date myself? You're fine. Okay. I didn't hear nothing. Uh, okay. <laughs> I did. It. <laughs> I didn't well, hear anything. We got some uh, grandes up in there, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. So right out of high school, I got diagnosed with lupus, and I went. I've had my ups and downs for like 15 or more years. Mm -hmm. And by the time um, when my body started trying to do something more and better, they said that I, they could no longer see the biomarkers in me, even though lupus is not curable. Mm -hmm. And my body was still showing some residuals right. from lupus, from all that I was going through. Mm -hmm. So at the end, when I was actually able to stay out of the hospital for a long, lengthy time, um, I talked to God and I was like, okay, so why did I go through that? Because, you know, yeah. he gives you things and it's not always for you. Right. You know, and right. I refuse to believe that I just went through this for nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he gave me this organization to be able to help other people because mm -hmm. as I was be able, um, coming out of the brain fog, as they call it, because your memory kind of comes and goes when you have lupus right. from medication and then the lupus itself, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So as I was coming out of that fog, I realized there's a lot of little organizations out there that can actually help people. Mm -hmm. right. And I wanted to be able to tell people where they are. Right. You know, so they can get help. I'm one person, and a lot of people call me, but I can't help the world as much right. as I would like to. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I don't want to kill myself trying to just do all the other stuff, so I'd rather promote everybody I can. Mm -hmm. Be like, I know who to send you to. Go around the corner. You know, people mm -hmm. are dying from either suicide or um, lack of education or, you know, just lupus right. itself, complications, not knowing that they have help right around the corner. Right. So if I can promote that help, then that's... So let me ask you something. What initially sent you to the hospital? What symptoms were you having prior to your breathe. diagnosis? Really? I literally could not breathe. I was living in California with my dad. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a moment, because my mother was here in Houston, Texas, and I had a moment where my chest just started hurting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, it's happened before, whatever. But right. it started getting worse, and my breath, I could barely breathe. So I called my mm -hmm. mom. She's a nurse. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what's going on. I can barely breathe. I feel my body just getting weak. She said, hang up and dial 911. Yeah. So I did that, and I, I literally had to leave the front door open because I was going down so fast that I couldn't even stand up. Oh, my God. Yeah. So um, the, am the ambulance EMS came, got me. They carried me over to the ambulance because I couldn't walk. And I was in and out of it and, and kind of delirious because all I can remember opening my eyes, oh, there's pretty mountains. Where are we going? <laughs> Oh, wow. So, yeah. But uh, I was in and out of it, and I kept hearing the doctors. By the time I got to the hospital, I kept hearing the doctors, and then all of a sudden I saw my mom. So you can imagine, you know, how long I was actually out that my mom came from right. Houston, Texas, all the way to California, where I was staying, right. Marina Valley, California. So um, <clears throat> the doctors were telling her, we don't know what's wrong with her, but she's dying. You know, so my, literally, oh. my body was literally shutting down on me. And um, by the grace of God, I have the mother that I have because – they didn't want to test me for lupus. Right. They said, well, she doesn't show all the signs for lupus. Mm -hmm. And my mom was very adamant about that. So when they did test me, the um, biomarkers were there, and they gave me all the right medication, and my body started to come to. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, your mom's awesome. She can't be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so, God. What, 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 do you still have, like, bad symptoms now with lupus, or you... What, what is it? I have learned how to take care of myself because being I, here in Houston. I, I heard, I, let me keep cutting y'all, but I heard you say something uh, at that conference mm -hmm. about once you once you reach your body or certain things, you have to replenish it with the right things or something. Detox. Detox, okay. Mm -hmm. So detox is really, really important. 
Now, another thing, my mom wasn't always the biggest and best cook. Okay. <laughs> so we ate a lot of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get older and you get out the routine and you eat a bunch of junk and all this other type of stuff. Right. So, but I liked my fruits and vegetables. I didn't realize that it was a detox for my system. Yeah. So I, I learned about that and I chose to detox um, a lot because mm -hmm. you can detox with carrots and um, salads and things like that. Mm -hmm. But no one ever told me about replenishing. So when I started right. doing more studying, because you detox, you rid your body of even the good stuff mm -hmm. when you detox. Mm -hmm. So you have to replenish your body of all the stuff that you're mm -hmm. ridding it of. Yeah. So do, doing that how, does that, how does that affect the lupus? virus or the symptoms of the virus um, it's, not a vi it's not a virus it's, it's not it's, it's not a virus it's, just a, it's a, an immune disorder a, 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 a immune disorder my so fault. Let, let's back up a little bit lupus uh -huh. itself lupus is an autoimmune disorder mm -hmm. your immune system was built to protect you mm -hmm. from all foreign right. bacteria right so when you have lupus your immune system is confused uh -huh. so therefore it looks at your healthy tissue and all the healthy stuff mm -hmm. in you as something foreign so uh -huh. it's like it attacks all your good stuff so it's like okay. your, your body, instead of fighting the strangers that are coming in, breaking in, is not fighting all the good stuff on the inside, and your body's kind of like, ugh, right. going through all of that. So that's right. what lupus is. So it's attacking yourself and basically trying to kill yourself. Uh, no wow. one says it like that, but that's, that is what well, it that, is. That's how, they, that's how it needs to be said, because some people just... <laughs> yeah, and you're comfortable you, with you, 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 just being open about yeah, it. You, you put it in, it in a medical term, they just goes over the head yeah exactly it did for a long mm -hmm. time the way they talked to me about how all the different things that i was going through and i was just just really confused you know you, all i knew is that what well, my doctor said and this is what i'm supposed to do so hey mm -hmm. not knowing that they were actually testing on me because they didn't right. know yeah. so they just experimented and say hey let's see what happens hey let's see what happens wow not realizing um as a patient a lot of medications can do a lot of damage than it does good and a lot of um, different medications, because I was on so many medications that I had to carry around. It was a page and a half. I had to carry it around because I can't pronounce all of that, wow. let alone remember it. Yeah. So I had all of that that was going on, and a lot of it, it got to a point where I was like, okay, well, is any of this medication counseling out each other that you have me? Right. With? You know, because right. it's chemicals. Yeah, and chemicals exactly. can cancel each other out instead of helping you. Right. And a lot of people, they was like, well, my doctor said I'm going to take this medication. And they take it for this long period of time. I said, well, your eyesight got better, but did you realize that your toe was falling off? Right. <laughs> oh. You know? So Th it hurts you all the time. You know what I mean? When yeah. I was watching TV, they'll bring out a, a new uh, pharmaceutical drug. Yeah. They say, <laughs> and, and, I mean, stuff from liver, I, I, I'll be like, Hit you with 99 side effects. I just rather right. go keep what I yeah. got rather than getting all the fish and stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, let, let, let and now you have to one. purchase some pills. You take this pill because this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then if this happens, take, take this, this pill. pill. Yeah. Right. Like, what the hell? Uh -uh. Yeah. So that was, that, was, that was what you was going through with the medication? Um, I believe so. Mm -hmm. There wasn't right. a doctor in the world that would tell me that. But I believe so. So when I stopped um, taking some of that medication, prime example, I have one doctor. She had me on a lot of medication. And I blew up to about 200 and something pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, even on my good fat day, I wasn't 200 and something pounds. Okay. She's <laughs> like, on, on, good good on my good fat day. I'm okay. done. <laughs> I'm done. I went 200 something pounds. So when yeah. I went to that doctor, I was like, look, I've never been this huge before. Mm -hmm. You know, I had cousins making fun of me talking about, just give me a pen. I'm going to pop your cheek. Oh, you my God. Yeah. I was just round. Was there some I was type just of steroids in the middle mm -hmm. or something? Yeah. Wow. So I was just this round butterball. And so when I wow. went to her and I said, I, I've never been this big before. What's wrong with me? She said, nothing, honey. You're just fat. That woman didn't tell you that. Yes, she did. Just that, just she, that blunt. Just that blunt. She said, it's okay, honey. You're just fat. So I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I was truly thick. Thick, 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 thick. Yeah, so, you stupid. I, right? <laughs> I stopped taking the medication, and by the time I came back to her, the doctor was like, oh, my gosh, what would you do? You look amazing. I said, stop taking your medication. Mm. And she looked at me like I was crazy. And therefore, she put in my records that I was not compliant and would not listen to the doctor. What? And I was like. That's not the case. You yeah. didn't listen to me. Right. You know, right. I mean, I was suffering. Right. And she didn't care. No, as long, long wow. as they pushing the pills, you know, that's what they get paid for. Yes, yeah. exactly. 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 I, I used to be a hospice worker. And when we Ooh, took our training, I discovered that pharmaceutical companies spend billions yes. a year getting doctors out to 
like certain retreats. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just lavish retreats. I mean, yachts and golf courts and yeah. expensive crab lunches and you name it, just to get them to push their medication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn, what the outcome is. Right. Whatever comes through that you know, hospital with these symptoms, this. Mm-hmm. You making cure with that, but won't you push this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the the only concern. Let's to get push rich medication. together. Yeah. I mean, a cure would leave them broke, so why would they cure us? Huh? I said a cure would leave them broke, so why would they cure us? Huh? Exactly. Yeah. And I want to address something you were talking about earlier about how, you know, a lot of how lupus doesn't look like or people don't put the label of lupus because of cancer and all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lupus is an immune disorder. Right. It means you're you're open to any Anything. and everything. You know, so it mimics. Like HIV. It, it mimics mm-hmm. a lot of these different mm-hmm. diseases out there. Mm-hmm. That's why you rarely see. They call see it the copycat. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that's why they you do? see a lot of mm-hmm. um, people with lupus have multiple illnesses Mm -hmm. it's very rare my mother who has lupus also has copd now she almost passed away from um from she had heart issues right now if she would have passed away they wouldn't have put lupus on her paper so therefore the records don't show the numbers because they'll put the popular disease on there exactly before they put the actual disease on there Wow. and Mm -hmm. it was said by a doctor quite some time ago it's something i was researching on youtube i can't remember his name and for his safety, I wouldn't even repeat it. Mm-hmm. But um, he said that in order to get cancer, your immune system has to be compromised. Lupus is your immune system compromised. Mm-hmm. You're open. Mm-hmm. 832-649-8406. Y'all better call this lady. This lady here sound like call, she's, y'all. she's sharp. <laughs> I know I mean, there's a lot of this people is, out uh, there with lupus. We are getting really educated wow. right now. I, uh, that's, that's, I yeah. lost a cousin, you know, um, many many years ago and um i watched her get big like you said Mm -hmm. and her face was just like you know it was just really really swollen or whatever so anyway i watched her take her last breath and that's when i got more educated to a certain degree about Mm -hmm. lupus but i never just really fully like you're really opening up some book pages right now because i i never really just did full research on it and I know a lot of people that are suffering in silence. I tag them in the video. I hope they are watching. And, um, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, what's something, something you have to pay attention to. A lot of us, we don't want to, um, if you say, I don't feel well, you kind of brush it off. Mm-hmm. You know, especially um, with lupus, it's kind of like walking pneumonia for a lot of people, mm-hmm. feeling like you got the flu all the time. Right. But if you got the flu, it's like, I'm just going to take a little medicine. I'll be all right. right. Lay keep down. on trucking. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, even, even those with lupus, they don't want... They don't want people to feel sorry for them. They yeah. just want people to understand what's going on. Right. Like one minute you're up and the next minute it's like, look, I'm sorry. I know I said I was going to yeah. do that, but I, I really got to get this rest. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, my my body has shut down to the point where I was in public. Where was I? I think I was at church. And all of a sudden, I was so tired. I couldn't drive. I fell asleep in the corner. Oh, my God. I literally fell asleep. And I didn't yeah. even know I fell asleep until I woke up. Wow. So when your body's tired, you better listen to it. Exactly. You know, and it's been a while since that since that an episode like that has happened by the mm-hmm. grace of God, because I know mm-hmm. how to take care of myself a little bit better. Right. You know, but it's that severe for right. someone who's saying I'm tired and I cannot move. I know I was mm-hmm. just sounded perky about an hour ago, and I apologize. I mm-hmm. did want to go out. Yeah. But my body is telling me that's a mistake. Right. Okay, y'all. We're gonna come back in a few minutes and let her tell us some more about this silent killer lupus. But the number is eight three two six four eight eighty four six. And we're going to go to this video, and we'll be right back. We're going to apply press on 2K19. That's on T-Round. Hey. Yo, hey. hey. I give and go like Gary Payton. Uh. They see me eating, they steady hating. Hey. I'm counting up watching Perry Mason uh. at the pack.
Chopped off 100 some K. Facts. Over last year, that's in my name. Nigga, think they running some things. Facts. But I ain't running shit on my brother grave. I had to run on some chains. Put that on your hands and stay in your lane. N- Facts. N- niggas out here mad. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to The Naked Truth. It's your girl, Lil Pookie, and I am joined by this beautiful lady right here. She is giving us a lot of insight on lupus, guys. Um, You know, her experience and what she's dealing with on a daily basis and how to take care of yourself if you're dealing with lupus. Like, she's getting us very, very educated right now. And I'm also joined by this guy over here, the square guy. Yeah. The one that they it. say that's stupid. That's what you're doing. I did it. Now you like you come out the yellow bus doing that. Don't I, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried, y'all. Anyway. <laughs> so how, how you 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 the loopy girl on the go. Loopy chick. Loopy chick. On the go. On the go. You know, y'all know I'm bad with names. You have with now. everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am cool. I am. Except though. for a relationship. Oh, oh, I'm a fool with a relationship, y'all. Oh, oh my god. The question of the day is, what y'all do in long distance relationship? Y'all know how hard it is to find somebody locally. Everybody that you know knows somebody, or you done dated their cousin, or you, you you know little Pookie and them. So you don't want to fool with Keisha and Shay and little Mike <laughs> them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was racist. How you gonna put me with Lachey now? You know, Lachey and, and, and Didi and Yeah, them. but I'm a little pooky, though. You didn't yeah. put me all in the category yeah. with them, like talking about. Billy, like, uh, uh, there uh, you Keisha, go. and uh, yeah. Becky and them. And Becky and them. And, yeah. and them, yeah. <laughs> so, y'all say, man, y'all ain't Becky man. ain't from the hood. Pookie okay, is yeah. not from the hood yeah, at all. Real Oaks, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know how the circle seems so small. It does. Now, mm-hmm. with social media, it seems like you can meet somebody on the other side of the world as if they was right there in your neighborhood. And if that connection happened, would you be open to a long distant relationship? 832-649-8406. Lines are open, y'all call in. You know, I can be wrong with two left shoes on two right feet. Mm. But I know they talk that talk. Man, but when they feelings get involved, mm. they don't care if you're on the other side of the planet. Nigga, distance can never separate two hearts that yearn for each other. These females up here bumping that. They get that right dude, they're going to be, girl, no, you know, I'm just saying, not. girl, I love you. I think I'm going to go move down there to Tokyo. Oh, no. Uh, no, no. To what? Tokyo. Tokyo. <laughs> no, I can say I've been that chick and be like, oh, okay, I might move and this, that, and the other. And like I said, it did not work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so but therefore, that, I did it for a minute, and I was just like, Lord, please don't let him come back. Don't let him come back. Right. Just leave him it's there. Just, it didn't work. No. Like Steve Harvey say, if he that interested, he'll move. Mm. That's true. Mm. But before that happens, there has to be a relationship. And are you open to trying that? That's he has not. to be able to travel. <laughs> if he can, if he got the funds to come see me every other week, we might be able to do something. So you got one no and one possible, like a game of spades. And I know 
they speaking from the experience. We got a caller. I bet it ain't no female. We got a caller. I bet it ain't no female. I bet it's him. <laughs> what? Welcome to the nigga truth. What's your truth? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, man, this what's happening, bro. How is that? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> man, would you be over to a long distance relationship? Own. Own if she's Oprah. Oh, uh, what? If she Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> Somebody got some loot. <laughs> oh, wow. No, no, I'm serious, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll actually be interested. I mean, I, I'll be open to it. I, I think, I think, I personally think that, um, and I'm not trying to call your, you know, your co-host, oh, Pookie, uh, uh, immature. Uh, Though she is, but man, now let me yeah, walk yeah, over yeah, here right yeah, quick. Yeah. I'll be back, y'all. Let okay. me see. What you say, Carla? <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think a certain level of maturity um, comes with uh, with acceptance of that. Uh, and and, 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 and oh, in addition to the fact that, again, you might just have people that you just, that's just not their preference. I mean, teach their own. But I think that, um, you know, you have a lot of situations where, you know, where, where a spouse may find a better job opportunity. You know, and, and it takes the other spouse a little minute to wrap it up on the, on the other end. That's and different. So, or they might have just a good opportunity where they are, and so they decide, well, you go ahead and move down there, and I'll I'll you know I'll catch up with you next year or whatever. And so next year. that you know, it's a lot, you know, you have situations where sometimes um, <laughs> uh, close relation, cl- uh, you know, in person relationships become long distance through circumstance. Woo! You know, but you said some so color. My thing is, you know, you got to keep yourself busy. I mean, you know, if, if, uh, if can if I give him a church finger? You know, give him the church finger. Making, you know, making some really good money and it's a, it's a, it's a strong career move. You know, I was, I was support that move. If, even if I stay down here, you know, like I said, we can see each other once a week, once or whatever. You know, commute back and forth. And so I think it just, you know, it just takes, you know, communication, um, compromise, and and, and a certain level of maturity. Let me ask you this. I, I, I can do the long distance, and, and I got a lot of stuff going on that you're busy enough to, to not miss you for, for a week. But before, <laughs> before, before I say anything, you got him on mute. Some of you ladies are real needy. Before I say anything, you got somebody got the church finger up in here. Yeah. You right, so, you so, right. So, so besides that, um, you know, you got to think about other situations too. Like, okay, what, what, if the, what if the brother get, you know, get a couple of parking tickets and um, end up in jail for a little while? You going to leave him? Like, so. <laughs> that's, a long, that's a long, that's a long, that's a long That is not the same thing. No, we're talking about, you're about talking totally about, things. you're talking about if your, your wife is. But but that's no, 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 no. Uh, that's, that's that's two people that's already together. That right, know each other. right. Oh, no, that ain't necessarily the truth. He might not have told me he was active duty. Shit, you don't know what's going on. Well, now he's lying. Right. About so what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> proving the point right there. <laughs> what, what about brothers who, who, um, who drive trucks? I know a lot of them brothers. That's a long distance here. You can say you true, to, true, but he can true. drive that truck to meet us too. So what? I mean, what you gonna do? You gonna you gonna stay you gonna stay down like four flats, or you gonna roll out as soon as he roll out? To drop that load off. Okay, can I please call the can I? Can I? Can I? Come on, sister. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you talk right quick because I, I got a question for you, Lupus ladies. So uh, go ahead. Okay. Lupus on the go. <laughs> Lupus, chick. I'm gonna need y'all to work yeah, this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. She been checking people about that all day long. <laughs> all right, chick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so first of all, you talking about if she Oprah Stedman moved? Let's try that one, okay? So it wasn't long distance for long. Secondly, mm. what you're talking about is two different things. If he get a job, if you already in the same city, some one of them gets a different job and they have to move. It does not take forever to know if that's the person you truly want to be with. Right. So if that's the case and you decide you want to make that person your one and only, and they decide to uproot, then I mean it doesn't take two, three, four, seven, ten years like it does some people when they're not married but expect somebody to follow them around the country. Mm-hmm. I would never. You got to marry me. Give me your last name if I'm supposed to up and root, uproot everything mm-hmm. and trust you with my life. Well, the point is, is he's asked, were you open to it? I'm, I'm only saying that you, that you can say you're not open to it, but you can get in a situation right here locally where it, where it turns into a circumstance, turns it into a long-distance relationship. But that's again, that's, that's something totally that's different what than what we were I'm speaking on because... <laughs>
Well, see, that's where, that's, 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 that's where I was coming from. Talking about. Yeah, that's, that's where I was talking about. about. And, and dating them through, through Snapchat for, for six months. I'm, I'm talking about, like, you done met these per- people a couple of times. That's you know, different. You down here, you done flew down there, and y'all really, you know, y'all really vibing. Yes. You know, and then, right. You know, a simple, safe thing. Yeah. You know, okay, are we going to, are we, we going, you know, do something for real? And if so, then what does that look like? And sometimes mm-hmm. it may be a long term for a little while until you wrap things up. You know, he might got to sell property just so he can move down here. You got to, you know, you got to wrap up things. got to put in your two-week notice to the job. I'm just saying, girl. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that ain't good. That's Lupa Chick. Thank you. Lupa Chick. Lupa Chick. Um, to talk, talk, talk about real quick, because y'all got a real good topic going on here. But talk about real quick, um, like, what do you do to, it, all, the, all the things you can do, I guess, besides the detox thing, um, you know, just regular routine or regimen to, to, to kind of, Spend this off or stay healthy, um, you know. So just some just some tips for for the listeners who uh, mm-hmm. who actually might be even dealing with it and don't even know, and don't even know they have it yet. Right. So one thing that's right. very okay, important. That. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, to answer that, one very important thing: everybody is different, so everything doesn't work the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. But changing the way that you eat, changing the way that you um, you cater to using chemicals. There's chemicals in your shampoo, your soap. I mean, you might have to change all of that and go back to natural, just depending on the person. I heard something about that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because there's so many different chemicals in the food that they're putting in the food these days. Because a lot of people, I've heard, I've heard a lot of loopies get upset, talking about, don't tell me about changing my food. That don't help, and this, that, and the other. But you got to keep in mind what they're actually putting in the food, which exactly. goes into your system. Exactly. You know, because those chemicals can, be, can um, contribute to a flare-up. You know, and you mm-hmm. not even realize it. Prime example, you know, as you get older, your body chemistry changes. Mm-hmm. So those chemicals on top of it, you got to be, a, you know, aware of that, of your system itself. Mm-hmm. I ate eggs as a child. My favorite dish, if you gave me eggs all week long, morning, noon, and night, I would eat them. Mm-hmm. Now, at this age, they're telling me I'm allergic. Wow. So, I mean, I wasn't allergic before, but now mm-hmm. I am. And I have to watch that, you know, and I had to wing myself off of it because mm-hmm. I still loved eggs. Mm-hmm. But all the different things that they're putting in the chickens and the eggs and all of that help my body flare up. And I wasn't right. even realizing it. So you have to keep all of that in mind about changing your diet and changing the way you exercise. I had one lady get mad at me because I posted on my page about exercising. And she literally went off on me on Facebook. So I had to let her know. I understand your frustration, Mm -hmm. but if you can do all of that on Facebook, then you can move a toe, a finger, a hand to even start your exercise regimen. I mean, because it starts somewhere. It has to start somewhere. That's right. Because once you get it into your mind, it helps the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't want to think, a lot of people don't want to believe that. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, well, I feel my body. Pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you Mm -hmm. also need to talk to your body and do something different. So that you can move in that positive set. Right. Now, if you're, like I said, when, when my body says it's tired, I sit my behind down. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that I'm going to mentally be like, oh, my God, I'm going to end up in the hospital. Everybody has their moments. Right. But at the same time, I'm going to sit my behind down. I'll make me something to eat. Watch me a movie on TV. And I'm going to make sure I take care of me exactly. so that I can get up the next day and do what it is that I have to do. Right. Instead of feeding right. in because depression is real and it oh takes you God. down into a spiral. Yes. And a lot of people are not realizing how two and two are connected when you have an illness and then depression sneaks up on you. Mm-hmm. Because you go from being with lupus, you go from being healthy and being able to move, turn cartwheels, and then you get diagnosed and all of a sudden you can barely go outside. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can barely walk to the corner store. Right. You know, you can't take care of your kids. Your whole life changes to where you can't work like you want to. You can't make the money you want to. You can't have the house that you want to. You didn't lost your car. Mm-hmm. You know, all of that plays in your mental state, mm-hmm. and that brings you down, which also plays with your body. Yeah. You know, and if you get the right doctor, your doctor will tell you that. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. have to be, those positive affirmations are important, not just in kids, as adults, because you exactly. need to be able to see something positive. The more negative you see, the more darkness you see on the inside of you. Mm-hmm. And yet that spiral is really, really hard to get out of. Oh, my God. Wow. I know, honey. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm got me over here speaking. I need to get diagnosed. Wow. So, in all that you said, does that help you? Let me just forget it. Mm-hmm. How often do you have a flare-up now? That's what, that's what I was going with. It. Um, my last major flare-up, um, I had pneumonia, and I was in the hospital for three months. 
mm-hmm. and the reason why I was in the hospital for three months is because when they give me certain medications, it, uh, the pills don't really work on me anymore. Mm-hmm. So right. they have to hook me up to IVs and stuff in order to push that stuff through my system. Because mm-hmm. they tried sending me home with medication, and it doesn't work like it does if I'm hooked up to an IV. Right. So I end up being in there for, you know, a weekend, a week, a month. Or, you know, and thank God it hasn't mm-hmm. been a year. Right. You know, but I've, I've done a couple of months span. And that was, the three months was like maybe about two years ago. Mm-hmm. And then um, earlier this year, I was I just had a lot going on and everything just was spiraling and my chest tightened up so much they kept me in the mm. hospital for a good weekend almost a week. Mm. So if you don't stress yourself out and overload yourself, you you kind of good. Um, I can. I'm, saying, I'm not saying patients. I mean lupus people, but I'm saying for you. For for me, yeah. um, stress does play a factor in mine, mm-hmm. but I also know how to meditate. You know, but sometimes um. Because there, I have an enlarged spleen mm-hmm. because I have a messed up liver, and mm. then it, it affects a certain things in my body, and that's the residual of the lupus. Because I was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver at twenty one, twenty two, and my doctor looked at me a little cra- crazy. He was like, "Well, baby, how long you been drinking?" I said, "Uh, I haven't." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, just yeah. Graduated. You want water? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so god. He was like, hey, real. It's like I mean, so he chunked it up to my liver issues is to having um, from having lupus, mm. and so when my liver messed up, my spleen got really, really big, which mm-hmm. brings a low platelet count. So it just it's like a, a domino effect when yeah. it comes to certain things. Right. So the change in the weather, or if I have if I eat something and don't realize it's not good for my body, I have to go back go through all of that. Right. And I don't go to the hospital as much because I know how to sit my behind down and take care of yourself. Yeah. I want to, when you say cirrhosis of the liver, mm-hmm. that is serious. Yes. Very. You say at 20, age of 20 what? 21, 22, something like that. Jesus. And you are, I am. He's going to ask you and you will. No, 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 no. I'm 40 ask now. No, no, no. But I'm, <laughs> I was going to say what you was going to ask. People normally don't live that no, long with cirrhosis no, of the liver. No, no. They don't like. I am just amazed hey, by this that, woman right that, now. When she that what got me when she said that. She, yeah. You did what? Mm-hmm. Cause I was a hospice worker and I've seen how fast cirrhosis of the liver take, take them out. Because mm-hmm. if your liver is no good, that means your your liver is what f- f- clean all your exactly. Yeah. But your spleen is what t- takes over that function. If your spleen does not function properly, mm-hmm. then it can't help what your liver is not doing. Mm-hmm. So if you have an organ that is messed up in your body, your spleen. That's why my spleen is so big mm-hmm. because it took over that over. function. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that the to liver help can fil- do. to help filter filter mm-hmm. some stuff through my body, which mm-hmm. is why my platelet count is so low, is because it sucks up all my blood. Oh my God. So you are blessed and highly Yes, I am a walking no, mirror. Let me tell you something. Let, let me say this. I hear people every day got something to grumble and complain about. Mm-hmm. Man, that's a cliche that says if you stop and think, you have a reason to thank God. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. from what she's saying, she go through with this lupus <laughs> thing. Bro, but really, really, we ain't got, we don't have nothing to complain exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are just ungrateful and oh, because, just, oh, oh because, uh, I ain't got oh, no gas, uh, I ain't got no yeah, money. Man, she, she, I got pickles on my hamburger. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just little stuff to get frustrated and overworked about. And you I just posted this not too long ago. Life is too short to be worrying about some, waiting on somebody to get their stuff together. I think I said stuff, because I got a lot of uh, you say shit. people. No, uh, I didn't say that. I'm telling you what I you said. It? I thought it, but I didn't want it to go on. But, the... I, but see, that's that's what makes us. I know, but I'm know telling you exactly what I typed. Some stuff that you think yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say it for okay. you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All well, right. You know. yeah. Yeah. All right. No filter. Oh, no, no filter. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, don't, I don't have a church home. They can't get me. I can't. Oh, wow. Get you. Oh, oh, you need to come on back here. We some party. Yeah. <laughs> so, Spook, can I let you for a minute? I, yeah. I don't know. Cause Behind the curtain, At my man. church, they just kind of laugh at me and be like, all right, all right, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. It's like, what, what you we got to say now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you blame it on your, your illness. I wasn't feeling good. Yeah, I'm having a day. Go on, get. Black folks is quick to blame it on some BS. Well, blood yeah, pressure you, been up all day. Right, you want to think yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't feeling good. Right, right, right. Y'all right. you know, you know it's my lupus. You're stupid. <laughs> no, I do not. Get a pass. Yo, you get a pass. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> if you're so, so quick funny. about it, oh, Lord, forgive me. Yes. Oh, Lord, you know my heart. I know. I do that every day, boy. My road rage is off the chain. I know, right? Mm-hmm. 
but so you, he's still working but you, on me. But, but, but hear all that you're going through mm-hmm. and me knowing a little bit about how those things work. You are walking. I am walking. Yes. Wow, you, yes. Cause the doctor, Definitely I had are. a doctor literally tell me at 20, at 22 that I would not live to see 24. I'm 41. I'll be 42 this year. Wow. wow. They literally told me I would not live past 24. So I got buck wild, you know. I was young. Come on. I was like, hey, well, if I ain't gonna live, if I ain't gonna live past twenty four, I'm gonna live it all up. Okay. You know I, think, I think you can look it up. I have heard of many, many, many life changing stories where people was given six months or less to live or three weeks to live, and they mm-hmm. went out and just let it all hang out, mm-hmm. and they've been living since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was the stress factor. Mind over I matter. Do. I yeah. always say that if you got positive wow. energy up here, it will flow through your body. Oh, I wasn't the positive. Doctors? I was just crazy. Oh, <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> no, don't lie to the people. No, I'm talking about. <laughs> don't lie to the people. I'm dying. I'm, I'm going to be crazy, too. Right? Say, I was just crazy. Yeah, I went out there and did the most. You know, 21. Yeah, my yeah, mama yeah. was strict. I was out the house. And, you know, I ain't went up out I was going room. to hell. I knew what an after hours was. I was like, hi. You oh, you was out there doing oh, the you thing. You were going to hell on a rocket, huh? <laughs> because the drawers on. Like, Front seat wait. action. Like, okay. well, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a smile. With a bomb. There you go. <laughs> okay, give okay, give, give a little people more about your organization. Or where they can get in touch mm-hmm. with you. Or the organization is called Gibson Lupus ARC, Autoimmune Resource Center. Mm-hmm. You can um, go to the website, which is gibsonlupusrc.net. Um, you can look us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're, we're literally all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an event coming up. We're actually walking in a Juneteenth parade, and we have mm-hmm. some space on our banner. So if you want to be promoted and show up support of lupus and autoimmune disorders, you know, look us up. We got it going out there where you can buy some space on the banner that we'll be carrying in the parade. Mm-hmm. We also have um, <clears throat> a praise jam coming up on September 14th. Mm-hmm. We also have a gala, a walk, and a pageant. That's something we do do. We do pageants, fashion shows, and mm-hmm. I also go out and teach leadership and self-esteem and entrepreneurship in different um, schools and programs. That's my program that I do all mm-hmm. within the organization mm-hmm. to help people find the beauty within and know that they have purpose past their pain and past that right. diagnosis. Right. So the pageant itself is not like a regular pageant. It's a pageant that um, uplifts people with illnesses. So you, right. if you're not able to walk, you can get somebody to walk for you. You know, oh, so that's awesome. We have all of that coming up. And mm-hmm. the phone number is 832-856-0341. Again, mm-hmm. that's 832-856-0341. We're we still looking for volunteers. We're looking for people to come out and walk and support. Just come help out. Support, support the system. Right. Support the people. Mm-hmm. In September 14th? September 14th is okay. our praise jam. Okay. Oh, so which one you need? Uh, volunteer for everything, right? Everything. Okay, we're going to talk. Uh, June, 15th, June 15th is the um, the one that's coming up. Was that next week? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's the parade that's I'll get all that in. info yeah. from you. Okay. Because I know people that, like I say, they suffer in silence. Every now and then they'll take mm-hmm. a picture on Facebook or whatever. Right. And, um. It's just too many people passing away from it. It know? is. Yeah. They say it's like. Lack of education. Point, lack of education. Um, lack of the support. You know, mm-hmm. depression. We've had people yeah. commit suicide. Oh. You know, they said. Behind, oh, well, behind having lupus or the effects of lupus. Do we have a face of lupus? No, no. I'm saying you say you have pe- you people are committing suicide. I say. Depression. From, from the from effects the of lupus. From the effects of lupus. Wow. I didn't know that. Yes. So they say it's like, um, well, it was some years ago. It's 1.5 in America and 5 million worldwide, and then it was 16,000 diagnosed a year, and it's 90 percent mm. women, 10 percent men. Mm-hmm. But men don't take that for granted. 10 percent is a lot in the millions, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then there was 20 percent that was actually dying from lupus complications, and that's only from the ones who were being diagnosed properly, mm-hmm. right. you know. Right. So all of those numbers have grown over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wow, that's our show, man. That little I was shot by. That was very, very informative. And look, my watch just died. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Pookie, you got anything you want to say before we go out? Stop no. about the yeah. watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I thank y'all for tuning in to the Naked Truth, and hopefully, we see you guys again next week at the same time, same place. Listen, what's next? Radio will roll out the red carpet one more time. The first show is this Friday, and I'm super excited, y'all. So y'all need to make sure you tune in. 
um, R&B classics, new music, old school, all of that stuff will be presented one more time. I am excited. So y'all make sure y'all tune in for that same website. So make sure y'all tune in. It's Friday, 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Either be there or you ain't square business. You ain't nobody. <laughs> yeah. And That's shout out to our guest today, man. She's an amazing woman. I'm just so proud of her. I call, I call a woman Zareal. 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 Yes, I am real. Yes. The royalty. That's why we asked you to do this show. Because if you, if you weren't so, so real. So real. <laughs> boy, Martin. That part. <laughs> That's our show today, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Nigga Truth, your political hip hop outlet. I'm Jimmy the Square Guy. I want to talk fly to you. I got a little Pookie in the house and Zareal Gibson for the Lupus Chick. On, loopy chick on the go. Thank you. Loopy right. chick on the go. He did it. I'm growing up, y'all. All right. Look at all you right now. smart and stuff. <laughs> Great show. Fuego. Hi.